pet stores. Those magical places where so many animal lovers find their new best friends, swoon at all the adorable pet products, and where we, um, I, always end up spending way more money than I intended. But it's worth it. But as exciting as pet stores can be, with all of the cute pets on display and seemingly infinite choices for novelty-shaped housing, colourful toys, gorgeously packaged pet foods, and highly unnecessary purchases, pet stores have a few secrets they don't want pet owners to know about. Today, I will be sharing a few secrets that pet stores don't want you to know about. <music> we adventure into the pet store and probably spend way too much money, I wanted to give a nice shout out today to Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is sponsoring today's video. If you've never heard of Ana Luisa, they are a luxury jewelry company without the luxury price tag. Today I'm actually wearing four Ana Luisa pieces. I'm wearing their earrings, a ring over here, a matching ring for my earrings, and a necklace. Ana Luisa creates all of their jewelry in small batches so that there's no waste. And speaking of waste, they offset 100% of their carbon emissions. Ana Luisa jewellery is made with only the finest noble metals, which makes them long-lasting. Every piece comes with a 365-day warranty, and shipping is available worldwide. If you're social, check out the Ana Luisa Instagram at Ana Luisa NY and subscribe to their newsletter for regular updates on special prices and new releases. If you would like to learn more about Ana Luisa, you can go down into my description box and click the link down there. That will take you to their website where you can browse all of their beautiful pieces. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video and sending me these gorgeous pieces. I absolutely love them. Now, let's adventure off into the pet store. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't a video to bash all pet stores. Many pet stores do things very well and are staffed with people who truly love animals, but no industry, including the pet industry, is without its drawbacks. And for the sake of clarity, the pet stores that I feature in today's video are run by some pretty cool people who genuinely care about animals and who have always been super open to feedback on how they can improve their stores. I'm making today's video to help you make better choices when it comes to your pets and to help you think more critically about which stores and products you trust with the health, safety and happiness of your pet. Pet store secret number one. The first thing pet store employees have to check in the morning is for any deceased animals. Ah, <sighs> the fresh scent of death in the morning. Sadly, many of the animals in pet stores come from warehouses which mass breed animals for sale. Although there are some regulations for the breeding and selling of companion animals in the large pet retail stores, it's also a very secretive side to the pet industry, and many animals are sold right after they've weaned or as young as possible, because this is when they're at their cutest and most likely to appeal to customers. Sadly, some of these animals die from illness, the stress of being in transit and moved so often, and sometimes even cannibalism. Seriously, mice, they'll eat each other all the time. And don't get me started on the mortality rate of store-bought fish. If you're going to buy an animal from a pet store, be sure to research the signs of what a healthy specimen of that animal should look like, act like, and even smell like. And if you see an animal in a pet store that just doesn't seem to be thriving, be sure to tell a pet store worker they don't want to make any of the other animals sick, and this will give them a chance to move that animal to the back and get it the health care it needs. Pet store secret number two. Most dental chews do nothing at all. So you're at the pet store and you're looking for a nice way to clean your dog's teeth. Naturally, you head to the dental treat aisle and grab a bag of dental chews. But wait, before you purchase those dental chews, check the packaging first. Unless you see this stamp on your pet's dental chews, it means there is no real evidence to prove that those chews have dental benefits. And pet stores don't want you to know this because if they only stocked clinically tested chews with real results, their shelves would be pretty empty. 
Take a look next time you're in a pet store and see just how many of the dental chew bags are proven to benefit your dog's oral health. Nope. 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 Yup. Greenies are the most popular dog dental treat brand in America, but a few years ago they changed their formula and I found it to be somewhat upsetting to dog stomachs when they have certain digestive issues. So I personally choose, huh, choose, whimsies, and I find that they last a little longer than greenies too. Of course, nothing beats a good old toothbrush and doggy safe toothpaste. Pet store secret number three. Most ferrets in pet stores are Marshall's ferrets. Who doesn't love going into a pet store and seeing the adorable ferrets? They play like kittens and are super cute, like long puppies. But did you know that most pet stores have contracts with Marshall's Ferrets, the company with a monopoly on the mass production of ferrets? In other parts of the world, like the UK, there are no mass breeders of ferrets. Most are hobby bred and are relatively healthy. Unfortunately, the mass produced Marshall's Ferret is known to be extremely susceptible to health issues such as adrenal disease and various lymphomas. This is because they are mass produced and come from limited breeding stock, they're selectively bred for temperament and colour, and having a Marshall's ferret of my own, I know how sweet their temperaments can be, but by far the most unhealthy ferrets I've met have all been Marshall's ferrets. Unfortunately, it's very difficult in the USA to find an independently bred ferret, so Marshalls really do have almost a full control on the ferret market. If you've already checked out the rescues and have decided to go for a shop-bought ferret, please be sure to select an animal with clear eyes and nostrils, no hard lumps or scabs on their bodies, and fully furred bodies at that. Also check that their vents look clear. I'm talking about their butts. Pet store secret number four. A lot of the merchandise on the lower shelves have been peed on. Listen, it's a pet store full of exciting smells and people are constantly bringing their dogs inside the store. And accidents happen. They happen a lot. Seriously, next time you're in a pet store, just look at how many cleanup stations you can see and how many mops and bottles of nature's miracle are scattered around the store. Pet stores usually do their best to encourage customers to clean up after their dogs, but some customers allow their pets to treat the merchandise like fire hydrants and never even admit to their dog peeing on some items. Some customers even allow their dogs to get away with a stinky number two inside the store. If your dog has an accident inside a pet store, don't fret. Just own up to it and the store will give you anything you need to quickly clean up the mess. You won't get told off or charged for it. Trust me, they've seen it all. But what I do recommend is if you're shopping on the lower shelves, take a good look at the packaging for any sticky looking droplets and when in doubt, choose the item a little further in on the store shelf. Pet store secret number five, not all treats are made equal. You might assume that in a pet store, all of the treats on display would be safe for your dog to eat. And while some quality assurance is conducted on which products hit the shelves, some treats and foods are more risky than others. A good example of this is dog chews. In some countries like the USA, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK, popular dog treats derived from animals such as bully sticks, pig's ears, and bones have to abide by very strict quality standards. However, in some other countries, quality control and inspection is not as much of a priority, and this can lead to extremely sick pets. The issue becomes complicated when pet products are imported into the USA from countries where quality control isn't as strict and these items are then sold in local pet stores. One particularly upsetting instance was when a foreign country saved costs on the production of their dog kibble by replacing wheat gluten with melamine powder. Melamine is used in the production of plastic. So, when shopping for quality chews, treats and foods, check to see where the treat is sourced. A treat may say, packaged in the USA, but on the back you might find it's a different story. 
packaged and sourced are very different things. I like to look for sourced and made in the USA, and I especially love to see products from New Zealand, like Zeewee Peak, which have super high standards for the quality of the animal products being used in your pet's treats and food. So these, fine, a bit fatty for my dog, but fine. Right next to it on the shelves, these bully sticks of questionable, very questionable origin. Pet Store Secret number six. The pet food aisle is only the illusion of choice and quality. Look at all these pet foods. So many brands and formulas to choose from, right? Wrong. The vast majority of American pet foods are owned by one of the five big pet companies. These are Mars, Nestle, P&G, Hills, and Big Heart. Speaking of Hills, they have a massive budget to spend on beneficial contracts with veterinary clinics and pet stores. See how much of these aisles are given to Hills Science Diet? That's not coincidence. And their ingredients are meh. Lots of cheap fillers. But because we see them everywhere and vet clinics get to stock them pretty cheaply in their clinics, this gives us the illusion of quality and trust. Side note, vet students actually take a course in pet nutrition at vet school and guess who creates the materials for the course? You guessed it, Hills. Anyway, I don't mean to pick on Hill Science Diet here. They're really not terrible, they're just not great. And I'm just showing you that pets are big business, a hundred billion dollar industry in 2020 to be precise. So some competitive tactics have to be expected. Instead of looking at the picture and carefully chosen words on your pet food package, I mean, literally, those words are chosen by teams of marketing experts. Read the ingredients list instead. The ingredients listed first are the most populous ingredients in the recipe. If you're seeing lots of corn, byproduct, or wheats, that's all cheap filler nonsense. Remember, corn is heavily subsidized in America. It isn't part of a dog's natural diet. Instead, look for limited ingredients made and sourced in a country with high standards for food production and whole ingredients. I'm not a big kibble fan because my dog is predominantly raw fed, but this kibble has it going on. This is a good ingredients list. And finally, pet store secret number seven. Not all toys are safe for your pet. It's easy to get carried away with buying the cutest, biggest, brightest, or cheapest pet toys in a pet store, but beware of items which can cause damage to your pet. For example, this toy says that it's suitable for cockatiels, but this is literally a plastic. Sure, it may not be made from particularly toxic materials, but a cockatiel's beak is sharp up, and if shredded and ingested, this toy could cause an impaction. And I also spotted this toy. On the surface of things, this toy looks great. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? It's textured, eye-catching for a dog. Dogs see in limited colors, but white does stand out to them. And it's by a huge pet brand, so it must be trustworthy. However, I don't buy anything without reading reviews first, and I know from my countless hours browsing Amazon, spending on Amazon, that this toy has broken a ton of dog's teeth. My advice to you is to have an idea of what you want to buy before you go into a pet store. This will stop you from getting distracted, help you stay within budget, and it will help you to steer clear of the items which might be a detriment to your pet's health. And if you're not sure of a pet product when you find it in the store, Google it. You would be amazed how many people out there have reviewed the very items you're looking to share with your pets. And remember that anytime you buy anything for your pets, your purchase is a vote. It's a vote for a product and the company who makes the product. So try to be knowledgeable about who you're supporting and what you're spending on. And that is it for today. I hope you learned something valuable from this video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you're not yet subscribed, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye.